All right, Bill Benner, you are the president and chief technology officer for Pangolin Laser Systems. You get to work with lasers, Bill. Yes, that's right, lasers. <laughs> now, for those just listening, Bill just used air quotes. I ex explain what Pangolin does. Yeah, well, Pangolin has been in business for 33 years. What we do is we make software and equipment and also the lasers that are used to create and perform laser light shows all around the world. We're talking about all the major theme parks, Disney, SeaWorld, Universal Studios, the lasers that are used in the movies for special effects. That's mostly our lasers that are doing that. Uh, wow. Lasers that you see uh, at sporting events where they're projecting the players' names onto the ice in some cases or onto the basketball court. Uh, so lasers are used in all kinds of things in, in television commercials and even the the Windows 10 background, that desktop, yeah. it looks like a window with it's kind of in blue. That was made not only with a laser, but it was made with our software and a laser that we sold the guy uh, out in California who did that, did that. Oh. So, so that's great. Yeah. So the lasers are everywhere. You can't escape them. And we're yeah. And how did you, yeah. How'd you get into this space? Well, you know, it, it is the e-myth story. And what I mean by the e-myth is the book by Michael Gerber called The E-Myth. And yeah. he wrote this great book. I recommend anyone read it. Uh, and it is, it, it's basically the story of how a craftsman gets into a business. Uh, and, and mostly because it is a labor of love. It, it is a craft. You know, he talks about pie makers in his book. But it's, it's people who get into this as, as because they're passionate about the thing and, and in our case the thing is the lasers we were the uh, first company to concentrate on doing software that could be used for laser light shows because at the time we got into it in 1986 there's only about 15 companies in the entire world doing laser shows and every one of them because there wasn't no commercial software to do this every one of them wrote their own software in some cases they blew their own glass tubes they they had to be a scientist to do a laser show back then because you had to be an electrician and a plumber lasers were water cooled and and all kinds yeah. of stuff so uh so we got into it just as a labor of love we created software to do this and when we did this, we knew that the market was limited. So we also had to put information out there. The 15 companies that were doing it initially were very secretive about, it's kind of like magic, you know, everyone's kind of secretive yeah. about their craft. And so we created a, a kind of a book and some newsletters about how to do these things and, and uh, the terminology that's used. And as we did this, we uh, basically served to expand the market and we have been yeah. ever expanding the market since. So that's how we got to do it just as a labor love. So I was in actually in, in college and in high school, I was in a rock band and all mm -hmm. the bands at the time had a laser like Pink Floyd and Blue Easter Colt. They had a laser as a part of their thing. And so we wanted lasers as a part of our band and but they were unobtainium back then. And it's just super expensive and hard to do. And so, so I made a laser for our band uh, and, and so that's kind of how I got into it. And I said, well, this is fun. And as what, what happened to the band is what always happens. You know, Nick moved up to Jacksonville and Bob went somewhere and I moved up from Ormond Beach over to Orlando. And so with the band kind of dissolved, but my love for lasers continued and my love for music and lasers. So that's what I've continued to do since then. Yeah, it's, it reminds me of uh, Brian Adams' summer of 69 right there. Jimmy quit. Jody got married. Should have known we'd never get far. Oh, but sure, there you sure. are. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, so it just so for someone who doesn't quite understand what you're talking about, uh, I, know, I know you shared some, um, some use cases earlier, but um, kind of explain where, where we're seeing lasers and what they look like today. Uh, you know, so we're talking, I mean, you and I talked previously, you know, you, there's a lot you can do here so it's not just like uh you know 1980s i think i remember ricky schroeder on silver spoons uh you know showing this laser with this fog and it was like the first time like we're you know we're seeing some of this uh maybe the, some of this cool new stuff um it, it's gotten pretty advanced oh for sure and not only advanced what you could do with it but advanced in so much as the uh as, as how easy it's become like I say, when I first got into it, laser was six feet long. It took Oof. two people to lug the thing around. It required 483 phase and water cooling. And now a laser is literally the size of a shoebox. It plugs right into 110 volt power. Uh, and it's just so easy to use uh, in some cases that you can connect to it by wireless. 
but so so it's it's a lot easier and cheaper. You know, when when I got into it, you know, a typical laser they started at twenty five thousand dollars. Now you can get into it for well under a thousand dollars, and do wow. a lot more with it. But uh, okay, so so basically, what a laser is that we use is a projector. So you can think of everyone knows about video projectors. You plug them in, and they project onto a surface. And so that's what uh, we do. But a laser projector is a similar size to a video projector, and and similar ease of use these days. You just plug them in. But the difference is that a laser is scalable. So uh, I I could, uh, you know, a uh, you could project a a logo or animation onto yeah. something literally as big as you want. Like for example, mm -hmm. in in Stone Mountain, Georgia, they project laser shows nightly onto the side of the entire mountain. Uh, mm. We have a client who was doing laser shows onto the Grand Coulee Dam in Washington State. Wow! So, so the projection can be very large, and because of that, very dramatic. And, and you know, obviously, at uh, Epcot Center, they have laser shows that happen every single night. Uh, oh yeah! And and there's hotels. There's one here in Orlando. It's the Marriott World Center who installed a, a laser system at their pool bar. What was happening yeah. was that. Uh, everybody was kind of leaving the pool bar at uh, seven o'clock or something like that, and the, and the pool bar wanted to keep the people around longer. And so laser shows can only happen at night. And so, okay, if you want to stick around to see the laser show, you'll have to stick around till nine o'clock or so. Right? Uh, so, so it basically keeps people in the hotel. The longer they're there, the more they're going to consume uh, beverage of various kinds, um, yeah. and, and and meals and that sort of thing. And basically. Uh, help to entertain the the family for a longer period of time. So, uh, so yeah, so that's it. It's it's projecting, you know, onto things. You know, I talked about these uh, sporting events where they'll project onto the uh, onto either the field when the um, when the Lincoln Center up in Pennsylvania opened when the, mm -hmm. the Lincoln Financial Field where the where the Philadelphia Eagles play. Uh, they had big laser and uh, fireworks show out there. And so it's, a, it's a, up and you know, when we first got into it, lasers were only a special effect. It's called uh, theatrical yeah. leading, uh, th theatrical lighting special effect. Um, but now lasers are used really everywhere. And w there's another thing too, which is that, you know, we started making just the software and then we branched out a little bit and made just the software and the hardware. And, and then most recently we are making the projectors too. We're becoming somewhat of a one-stop shop here. And now what one of the things we discovered is the things that we make inside a laser projector can be used mm -hmm. elsewhere too. For example, we make these little laser scanners here. Like here's a little la laser scanner. Here's the size of my yeah. finger. See how small this thing is. Tiny, tiny. We manufacture these things in Orlando. And these are now being used in 3D printers and even self-driving cars. So ah. we make the technology that enables the 3D printers and self-driving cars to work. So, so, yeah. so it's just kind of been ever expanded. So uh, now you and I talked previously and we talked about how you were able to grow your company because at the beginning, I think you shared, I mean, you got a lot of criticism for your model and I think you kind of proved them wrong, right? Well, I'll tell you the story. It's a, it's kind of a funny story. So, and it, it is again kind of getting back to the E myth, it, it which is the 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 uh, the story of how uh, somebody creates the business just may, mostly for themselves, for their passion, and to share their passion. And so that's what we did. And so, uh, when we first got into this, there was only 15 companies in the entire world uh, making mm -hmm. or doing laser shows. And so, the 15 companies, when they'd see us, they'd literally laugh and they'd say, "Don't you understand? There's only 15 companies doing this. Even if you got." 100% market share and sold your software to all 15 companies. What are you going to do when you when when you know uh, th that's it? You you can you you soaked up the whole market. You achieved market saturation, and that's it. You don't make any more sales. And you know Patrick yeah. and I, when we first started the, the business, my part my partner Patrick, um, we we didn't know that we were, we're Harvard business graduates. We just said, well, you know, we'll figure that out when we come to it. And so what happened was as a result of us also publishing information. Uh, and making laser shows easier to do, um, what happened is it, it surprised us a little bit, but the market just continually expanded and we never ran out of customers. And um, many of the 15 companies are no longer business any, any longer. Some of them are, um, 
but um, but just many more companies are doing laser shows and the business is ever expanding. And there's another thing I, I share with you too, which is this, uh, the concept of our plateau. So, um, so we started the business in 1986 and, um, and by the year 2000, our revenue was about, let's say 1.1 million. And it hung around there for quite some time. And the reason is, is because for the longest time, the, the, uh, the words of those first 15 guys <laughs> stuck in our, our what are we going to do when we sell our last system what are we going to do when yeah. we sell our last system and so we actually believed for for decades that, that there was going to come a time when we sell our last system and so therefore we better operate the cons the, the, the the system and the company as conservatively as we can we can't do this and we, it was basically a mindset thing and what got us out of that mindset was uh, what we can call masterminds these are groups that business people come to and get together and share what's working, what's not working. And that's where we learned about these great books. Like I say, The E-Myth is a great book. The mm -hmm. book Good to Great, mm -hmm. The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Uh, you know, And so what we found was that when we applied the lessons in these books, that we can expand the business. And we, we got out of the mindset that we're, every any day now, we're gonna sell that last system, so we better be careful. You know, We got out of that <laughs> mindset. And since then, so, so we, we, we got out of that plateau to give you an idea of our last kind of three years so uh two years ago our revenue was i think somewhere around let's say seven and a half million last year our revenue was 10.3 million and this year our revenue will be 20 million um wow great. wow and, and it is just applying the lessons uh in these books and seeking out additional help masterminds uh listening to podcasts such as yours so, so these podcasts are really very valuable so, yeah. so that's kind of how we, that's how we accomplished what we did. Yeah, truly amazing. So um, what, what's the future then for, for Pangolin? And by the way, I should, for someone who's like, what does he keep, what's, it, what, what's the name of the company? They, they haven't said the name of the company. It's Pangolin. So it's P-A-N-G-O-L-I-N.com. And so, and, and can I just tell you, Bill, that, <laughs> Every time I go on your website, I get sucked in because you've got a lot of really great videos of people demoing things and it's it's like hypnotic to oh, watch. Great. Yeah, yeah. So just as a side note too, a pangolin, what a pangolin is, it's not just a name or a person's last name or anything like that. A pangolin is a small East Asian ant-eating animal that rolls up into a little ball. Uh, the pangolins are actually a, a, a delicacy in some countries too. And we have a Google search for, for, for pangolin. And what was funny is that occasionally we will see, we will receive these reports from Google, like uh, 1500 pounds of pangolin uh, confiscated at the port of something like this. And so it's, it's kind of funny. 1500, <laughs> well, there's 1500 pounds of our stuff out there. That the, no, a, 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 a pangolin is an animal. And, you know, like I say, we started in 1986, long before the internet really was, was present. And so, you know, back then when we started a company, yeah. you had to do a name search and we just, we were very unsophisticated. We didn't know how to do a name yeah. search. It sounded kind of expensive. And so, so we, we, we saw this, this, uh, this special, uh, a National Geographic special on the pangolin. And we just figured yeah. that nobody who, nobody else would choose the name pangolin for the name of their company. And so we just chose the name uh -huh. pangolin. And so that's how the name uh, got started. You know, fun fact, it is the one of the most trafficked mammals in the world. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's uh yeah. It, it, there's actually a documentary about about this and the animals on the verge of extinction because yeah. it's so heavily trafficked. That's crazy. Yeah, oh, it's, sure. it's a beautiful animal, really cool. Yeah, it really anyway, is. I could see I could see the allure. Yeah, the, 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 and people make boots and belts and all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah, cute. don't do that. These guys yeah. are too cute for that. Yeah, it really is. They're, they're very cute, very smart animals. They're re really pretty special. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, so in terms of, oh, let me ask you this. So what do you do, like, how, how do you do client acquisition at this point now? Oh, great story. So. So we do the obvious stuff like uh, Google ads and Facebook ads. We do uh, the trade shows. We go to trade shows and the trade shows we, we try to go to are ones that are, are related to our industry. Most recently we've been going to trade shows that are related to 
uh, building. Like mm -hmm. uh, we went to Infocom recently. This is a kind of an information thing. We're going to uh, things where architectural. So lasers are starting to be used in architectural lighting to to highlight and outline buildings. Oh, it's called, no kidding. Uh, it's called we call it mapping. So we can map yeah. the building. We can highlight the, the you know the, the the windows and the door and that sort of thing. Yeah. And, and lasers also used to map out and highlight automobiles during the automobile introductions and that sort of thing. So we, we try to go to trade shows, um, but I'll tell you, here's the funny story uh, that your listeners may benefit from really uh, to, to a great degree. So we did this study, it, we spent six months, we starting from January until July, and we did this study about, and we, we have a lot of data at, at our uh, disposal. So we say, okay, people go, have this Google ad, they see our thing, they click on this, they go here, they interact with the funnel, they receive these emails, they click on these things, they, they're watching these videos, and we, we, we watch what they did and, and how, how many of them result in a sale and what they bought and all this stuff. And we have all this data. Fortunately, mm -hmm. we built this system that gives us all this. Yeah. At the end of the day, what it says what we wanted to say is, okay, if you want to do it, okay, you advertise here. It's got to yeah. be a, a border that's this color. It has to have these pictures, these high headlight headlines and that sort of things. And and at the end of the day, what we found is it sure is great to, to have existing customers to market to rather than trying to capture new clients, you know. So, ah. so basically, the value of your existing clients is a lot higher than trying to go out and spend a lot of money to, to acquire new people. Yeah. That's, that's the lesson that, that we that we learned after a six months study. Interesting, interesting. So, it, you know, of course, keeping them super happy, reselling them, and you guys also have, if I'm not mistaken, you have a kind of an upgradable model, is that right? Yeah, for, it's for, what we call for product line? Yeah, it's what we call an ascension model is another thing that we learned it through these uh, masterminds yeah right? and it's just something that we didn't have when we were stagnating and plateauing and that we do have now in other words we have a product that people can get into for less than five hundred dollars it's mm -hmm. called quick show right and so and then so and quick show does a lot of stuff it's a great piece of software really solid but if people outgrow they, they need more we uh, the next step up is something that we call beyond it's our next mm -hmm. level software platform and then beyond we ha actually have three levels we have essentials and advanced and beyond ultimate right so we have this ascension model where um we can address the the needs and the requirements of the people like for example you could do this uh this building mapping even with our least expensive software but to do more advanced things more interactive you know we, we have software that people can use with interactive infrared cameras where the laser will follow you around and and just you know be projecting around you and just all kinds of other stuff but that's in our higher level software you know because it's the higher level right. production companies that are right. doing that kind of thing yeah so so it is an ascension model and this is just stuff that you learn through these um through these masterminds through podcasts mm. and stuff like that it's and it's not something that yeah. you can really figure it out for yourself wow wow well, Bill, this has been really, really great. Um, and, and so who would make, uh, you know, obviously I was going to ask, who would make a great client for you? Our existing clients. Keep on buying yeah. new things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but, but people wanting to, you know, our, our clients are, you know, your local DJs who just want to spice up their, their meetings and their uh, boy, meetings I'll say. and that kind of thing. Uh, it's like I say, it's it's the production companies who have lighting and want to to add to basically take things to the next level. You know what I think? It, what I say is that lasers really spice up uh, what you know, basically add spice. It, it's it's, it's yeah. just like eating a sandwich without spices is very bland. But when you add mustard and ketchup and and various uh, you know kind of spices that you put on, that's what adds the pizzazz. Uh, lasers are the thing when you go to a rock concert lasers are the thing that makes the rock concert uh, memorable oh so it oh, oh gosh yeah aging and memorable and and basically more fun so that's that's kind of the that's the net result so anybody wanting to to basically spice things up and make things more memorable more engaging and more fun the, those are the people who could benefit from laser systems Fantastic. Well, Bill Banner, thank you so much again, uh, the Chief Technology Officer for Pangolin. And uh, again, that's at P-A-N-G, 
O-L-I-N.com. Bill, thank you so much for all your insights, sharing your experience. Congratulations on your success as well. Oh, likewise, Josh. You know, I've, I'm a real fan of yours. I watch you on local WKMG TV and listen to your podcast. So it's been great knowing you too. <laughs> Thanks, Bill.